what that music say? Yes, sir, Amos. That music say, Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Andy Show with Ernestine Wade, Johnny Lee, Lillian Randolph, Roy Glenn, Sarah Berner, Jeff Alexander's music, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Freeman Gosden. You know the real test of any product is whether or not it gives you the satisfaction you want from it. That's why my partner, Charlie Carell, and I never grow tired of urging you and all of our friends to try Rexall drug products. For almost 50 years, Rexall drug products have been used by literally millions of people with complete satisfaction. 10,000 independent family druggists aren't fooling when they tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Well, three o'clock in the morning is the time when all good little birds and husbands should be home and in bed. However, it's three o'clock, and the front door has just opened. Hmm. So far, so good. I gotta be careful, though. I think I'll stop here and listen a minute. That's funny. The birds are still squeaking. Someone is stalking me. Good evening, Sapphire, my darling. George Stevens, what's the idea? Uh, the idea of what, my precious? Don't you pull that. What do the clocks say? Uh, the clock, uh, the clock say tick-tock. <laughs> the little doggy say bow-wow, and the little piggy say oink-oink all the way home. I don't... Oh, my head. Honey, where's your sense of humor? I lost it around 11.30. Now, I want an explanation about where you've been till 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, I could answer that, but I don't think my head could stand it, honey. <laughs> George Stevens, I'm waiting for an answer, and I ain't in no mood for no nonsense. Would you believe me if I told you that I fell asleep in the large hall and just woke up? No. Well, there's no sense in going into that, then. Is there? <laughs> Let me put it another way. Would you believe me if I told you that I got on the wrong subway and ended up uh, in Coney Island? I would not. Hmm. Tell you what, honey, you just tell me what you would believe and that's where I was. <laughs> George Stevens, my patience is exhausted. All right, honey, all right. I might as well tell you the truth. I got in a little card game with the boys. And, well, I know that I shouldn't have stayed, but you know how them things is. I was... 36 cents ahead, and I didn't want to quit and let them think I was a bum sport, you know. Uh, I know I shouldn't have stayed so long, but, well, that's the whole truth, honey. Just exactly like it happened. Well, George, as long as you finally told the truth, it's all right. But you should have told me that in the first place. I'm going on into bed. The first place? Hmm, how could I have told in the first place when I just thought of it now? <laughs> Well, the kingfish got away with his story. Sapphire believed every word of it. However, the next morning, while she was going about her housework, the doorbell rang. Now, who can that be? Yes? How do you do? Uh, Is this the residence of Mr. George Stevens? Why, yes, it is. Well, I'm the manager of the Blue Slipper Nightclub. I'd like to speak to Mr. Stevens. Blue Slipper Nightclub? Yes. Well, uh, Mr. Stevens ain't in right now. Can I help you? Well, yes, you look like the type of servant who can be trusted. Oh, oh, I do. Yes, this is uh, Mr. Stevens' wallet. Uh, He left it at his table when he was in the club last night. He was in your club last night? I'll say he was. (laughs) Why, he practically closed up the place. Well, uh, here's his wallet. Uh, Will you let him have it? Yes. I'll let Mr. Stevens have it all. <laughs> well, uh, good day, and uh, incidentally, uh, tell him that Tootsie sends her regards. Tootsie? Yes, the hat check girl. Old Georgie is a rascal, all right. <laughs> well, good day. Well, nice hat check girl. Well. Hello. Mama, this is 
Mrs. Sapphire. Get over here as fast as you can. The old fire horse broke out of the barn again. Oh, I tell you, Andy, I really took it out after my big night at the blue slipper. Yeah, come down to the lodge all here to get a little rest. Well, Kingfish, this job you got is the most unusual one I don't ever hear of. A man paying you $30 a week to go around eating and spending money in nightclubs. Well, you see, Andy, I was what they call a spotter. Uh, this Mr. Lydon, who owns this chain of nightclubs, uh, well, this is his way of checking up on the food and the service. Have me pose as a big spender, you see. Yeah, well, that's a pretty important job. You know, I guess a lot of fellas' jobs is riding on your stomach. The chefs and the cooks and the waiters. Oh, yeah, yeah. After a meal, if my stomach rumbles, it has repercussions in three different unions. <laughs> Tell me this, uh, is you told Sapphire yet about the job? No, and uh, I made that mistake on too many jobs in the past, you see. Uh, I never last too long on these jobs. Uh, usually I tell Sapphire is working, and she starts bawling with joy. Yeah. Then the next day I have to tell her I was fired, and she starts bawling on account of that. Hmm. This time I'm going to wait till I get fired before I tell her, and I was working it so I can combine all the bawling into one big lump, you see what I mean? There? Yeah, well... What do she think you're doing when you comes home at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning from these nightclubs? Oh, I don't have to worry about that. I gives her some cock and bull story. I, I got that woman eating right out of my hand, boy. Right out of my hand. Yeah, well, just the same, I'd be careful. Many a lion tamer thought the same thing and ended up scratching his ear with his elbow. <laughs> Come in, Mama. I'm so glad you got here. Now, now, take it easy, daughter. Tell me all about it. You say that mangy old timber wolf has been doing some howling again? <laughs> Mama, he's been coming in at three in the morning. He's been going to nightclubs. Huh. Nightclubs where they got showgirls. Huh. Mama, huh? you think he could be interested in one of them? You can take my word for it, Sapphire. A man don't start looking at a road map if he ain't going someplace. <laughs> you know, Mama, I never would have found it out if he hadn't left his wallet at the blue slipper. And this morning, he told me he was going out again tonight on business. You would think George would not start something like this at his age. Oh, this is the age they all start. When they gets over 40, they gets courage to do the things they've been thinking about all these years. <laughs> oh, Mama, what can I do? Sapphire, there's only one thing to do in a case like this. Fight fire with fire. You make him jealous and he'll be so busy watching you, he'll forget all these coarse girls. You see, you, you got to pretend you're interested in another man. Oh, but Mama, I couldn't do that. And I don't know no other man. Well, you gotta get someone. And you have him up here for supper while George is out and pretend you's interested in him. But, Mama, who would George be jealous of? Well, now, let, 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 let me see now. Sapphire, I got just the big cheese to bake the trap with. That no good friend of George's, Andrew H. Brown. <laughs> Good evening. This is your Rexall family druggist speaking to you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we recommend and sell the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Like Rexall aspirin, for example. When swallowed with water, the five full grains of pure aspirin in every Rexall tablet are ready to go to work for you even before they reach your stomach. Yes, there's no faster-acting aspirin made. Ask for Rexall Aspirin at Rexall Drugstores everywhere. Say, Lightning, uh, walk with me home to my rooming house, will you? Ah, uh, yes, uh, I'll be glad, uh, Miss Andy. <laughs> On top of old Smokey. Do -de -o -do -do -do. Say, Miss Andy. Huh? Uh, look what's coming down the street here. Where, Lightning? Uh, straight ahead there, I think it's a woman. 
Yeah, the head kind of looked like a woman, but the way the toes point out there, it, looks, it walks like an ostrich. <laughs> Holy mackerel, that ain't no woman. It's the kingfisher's wife, Sapphire. Well, uh, that's her, all right. Well, I'm going to duck. The last time I run into her on the street, she was coming from the fish market. I tipped my hat to say hello, and she let me have it across the side of my head with a codfish cake. Well, you was too late. Uh, she done spotted us. Uh, here she come. Yeah, well, I hope she ain't been to the fish market. Hmm. Well, 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 if it ain't Andy Brown, one of my favorite people. How are you, Andy, darling? It's so good to see you. I gotta watch it, Lightning. She's talking like the Japanese did just before Pearl Harbor. <laughs> How you do, Mrs. Stevens? Oh, Andy, not Mrs. Stevens. Call me what George calls me. You mean right to your face? <laughs> uh, oh, ah, uh, oh, uh, you mean uh, Sapphire? Yeah. Oh, how is you, Sapphire? Andy, why ain't you been up to see us lately? It's been such a long, long time. Yeah, well, the uh, last time the kingfish asked me up for supper, I didn't think I was welcome. Well, whatever gave you that idea? Well, I guess it was the soup. I figured it, uh, I was a little unwelcome when I found them BBs in my matzo ball. <laughs> Why, Andy, that was just an accident. And I want you to come up to supper tonight. Tonight? Yes, I'm having a lovely supper. It's all planned. Roast beef. I'll expect you about seven-ish. Yeah, well, you better make it 7.15-ish. I got to iron out a shirt. <laughs> Yes, Mama, I had to call you. Everything's working fine. Andy Brown will be here in a few minutes for supper, and I'm wearing that new strapless gown of mine. Fine, daughter, fine. And where's that old bald-headed eagle? Oh, he went out about an hour ago. But when he finds out about this little dinner I'm having with Andy, he'll set up and take notice. Well, honey, don't forget to keep the shades up so the neighbors will know what's going on and will get back to George. Oh, don't worry about that. That nosy Miss Nielsen across the court will see everything. That's Andy now. I'll call you later and let you know how I made out. Now, let's see. The candles is on the table and everything is perfect. Oh, it's you, Andy. Come in, come in. Uh, good evening, Sapphire. I, uh... Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to bust in on you while you were still in your camisole. <laughs> Why, Andy, this is my new evening gown. It's a copy of a Paris model. Looked like they run out of material while they was copying it. <laughs> but I guess if the kingfish proves of it, it's okay. Sit down and make yourself comfortable, Andy. Dinner will be ready in a minute. Yeah, well, fine. Say, Sapphire, I just noticed them there. There's only two places set at the table. Ain't you going to eat with me and the kingfish? George ain't here, Andy. Uh, we're alone. Alone? <laughs> You mean there ain't nobody here except you, me, and the roast beef? That's right, Andy. <laughs> mm, yeah. Say, hey, Sapphire, I think I'd better be running along. According to Emily Post, the roast beef ain't much of a chaperone. No, 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 Andy. George will be here later. Yeah, well, I guess it's all right. Now you sit here by the window, Andy, and I'll sit over here. Ain't it nice eating by candlelight? Yeah, it is. Yeah, let me start in here, too. Oh, you know, Sapphire, this show is a nice mixed green salad. Mm. Andy, uh, I hate to mention it, but you're eating the centerpiece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, them petunias has got a tang to them, all right. <laughs> Now, you sit right there, Andy. I'll go get the soup. Well, Sapphire, uh, listen, before you get the soup, uh, would you kind of pull the shade there? I got a feeling we is being watched from across the court. Why, Andy, there ain't nobody lives there but old Miss Nielsen. Well, look at that Venetian blind. Up around the eighth slap, there's a pair of eyes. <laughs> and down by the bottom slap, there's a nose. <laughs> Either she has called a neighbor in, or Mrs. Nielsen got a face that's six feet long. I mean. Don't pay no attention, Andy. I'll be right back. Sapphire, that was a very nice dinner. 
But I wish the kingfish would get you. It's getting late. Never mind, Andy. You just sit in the easy chair, and I'll sit here on the arm, and we'll talk. Yeah, well, I... Uh... Well, I'll wait a little longer. You know, Andy, you is George's best friend, and I've never really got to know you very well. And, um, well, don't you think that when two people have been married as long as me and George, sometimes they drift apart until the attraction they once had for each other is all a part of a dim past? Don't you think this occurs in many instances? Uh, don't you think so, Andy? <laughs> huh. Some lover boy. I wanted a Romeo, and I wound up with a Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> Sapphire didn't wait up for me. I guess it's safe to put the lights on. Oh, me, it's 2 30. This nightclub job is killing me. Mm, look at the table here. Set for two. Oh, I guess you had a mama over for dinner. Wait a minute. What's the cigar doing in the ashtray? <laughs> it couldn't be your mama, because this is a panatella and a mama's partial to white owls. <laughs> Maybe the old walrus switched the brand. Uh... <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Nice to see Lodge Hall. George Kingfish Stevens speaking. Now, what's that? A well meaning friend. My wife, what? With a who? When? A, a where? Oh, no, no. Listen, who is this? Uh, uh, hello? Uh, hello, hello. Oh, me, they done hung up. Holy mackerel. That well-meaning friend said that a man was up at my wife's apartment last night. That cigar. Yeah, and the table set for two. I gonna find out who it is and kill him. I gonna kill him dead. Yeah, how could a fella do this to me? Sneak it up and have him dinner with my wife while I is out. And roast beef at a dollar and a quarter a pound. Oh, <laughs> And now here's your Rexall family druggist. Today, all across the country, there's a word that's getting to be a synonym for multivitamins. Yes, and I know what it is. Plenamins. Right. But can you tell me why? Of course I can. Just two plenamins a day give you ten important vitamins, including vitamin B12, plus the valuable liver concentrate and iron, plus other factors of the vitamin B complex. Now, where did you get all that information? Off the label. Where else? Then you take plenamins yourself. Naturally. And are they convenient? The daily dosage is foil-wrapped and individually sealed. You just tear it off, and all the rest remain completely protected, with practically no loss of potency. And you want to know something else? Go ahead. You can take plenamins for only pennies per day. Well, friends, need I say more? Ask for plenamins. P-L-E-N-A-M-I-N-S. Plenamins. At Rexall drugstores everywhere. Now that's the whole story, Calhoun. While I was out last night, some fella come up and had dinner with my wife. Now I done got the whole story from the neighbors. Calhoun, what is it going to do? Kingfish, this is one of the most dastardly things one man could do to another. <laughs> A thing like this shows the terrible evil that lurks in the heart of this man. It showed that this unscrupulous viper has sunk to the lowest form of chicanery. Kingfish, this boy has done a bad thing. <laughs> Calhoun, look here. I've never been so upset in my whole life. i got to find out who this fiend is that's violating the sanctity of my home. Well, it seems to me like that if you want to find out who he is, the thing to do is trace him through the neighbor. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll find out who it is. I'll nace him through the trace. I mean, I'll trace him through the nace. Now, what? calm down. Now, 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 calm down, Kingfish. You're too excited to get any place. I tell you, I'll go up there and speak to the neighbors myself. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll go over and speak to Andy and see if he got any idea who this fiend could be. Now... <laughs> You got to find out anything, Calhoun. You call me up over to the lodge hall. All right, I'll get up there right away. Oh, me. 
Why, oh, why would this fellow want to get interested in sapphire? Well, that's where it is in life, Kingfish. An attraction like this is one of the mysteries of nature. There's a certain spark, a certain magnetism, you know, a certain fascination. Yeah, I know, but uh, what would draw this man to sapphire? She ain't much to look at. Neither the hippopotamus, but at the zoo, they always draw the biggest crowd. <laughs> Oh, come in, Brother Ender. Hey, Kingfish, I wanted to ask you something about last night. I was wondering if, uh... Hey, Kingfish, what did you got that bat, uh, that bat there, that baseball bat, and them brass knuckles on your desk? What is that for? Well, uh, I go pulverize somebody, Ender. I gonna take this bat and spatter them all over the state. That's what I gonna do. Well, who is the fella? I, as your pal, I'll be glad to help you beat up on the poor boo. <laughs> well, I'm waiting here for a call to find out who he is. Well, I'll wait with you. I ain't got nothing to do. What'd the fella do that you want to pulverize him for? And, uh, you know what this sneak done? What? This home wrecker, this fiend. Do you know what it done done? What? Like a thief in the night, he done come into my home and tampered with my most precious possession. Oh, somebody done stole your toupee again, huh? <laughs> so, and uh, while I was working late last night, this home wrecker come up and he had dinner with my wife. <laughs> Uh, Andy, uh, you were smoking a cigar a minute ago. Uh, what happened to it? I must have swallowed it. I've been doing that a lot lately. Uh, Kingfish, uh, let me get something straight here before the conversation flies off on another tangerine. Yeah, uh, This fella that me and you was waiting to subdivide with that baseball bat, he is the fella that had dinner with your wife last night? Right. Well, like Napoleon say at Waterloo... I has had a lot of better days than this. <laughs> well, I tell you, Andy, when I find out who this fella is, I'm going to take this bat and I'm going to haul off and... Uh, uh, wait a minute, Jeff. Uh, hello? Yeah, that's the Kingfish. Oh, yeah, Calhoun. Oh, you did? Great work, yeah. Who is it? Who? Spell it out. <laughs> B like in baby. R like in round. O like in Ohio, W like in Weasel, and N like he's nearer than I thought he was. <laughs> Thank you. So you, my lifelong pal, was the one who had dinner with my wife last night. Now, what has you got to say to this? The roast beef was too well done. <laughs> Jimmy, you ain't getting away with this. I'm going to beat you with an inch of your life. Now, wait a minute, Kingfish. Put down that bat. Now, this whole thing was innocent. I think you was going to be there. I as innocent as a baby lamb, Kingfish. Well, I'll teach you to you do your bow barn around somebody else's house. Listen, Kingfish, put the bat down, will you? This is ridiculous. The last person in the world I as interested in is your wife. Oh, she ain't good enough for you, huh? <laughs> I'll teach you, you monster. Wait a minute, Cher. Wait a minute, Kingfish. What you doing? Hey, Kingfish, what? wait a minute, Cher. What's going on? What in the world is you two fellas up to here? Listen, Amos, tell the Kingfish to put that bat down. He acting like a madman here. Amos, when I was out working last night, this weasel went up and had dinner with my wife. No, sir, listen, Amos. Sapphire done invited me up there. And I thought the Kingfish was going to be home, too. I don't know what in the world is going on around here. Kingfish, look here. Is you out of your mind? Andy wouldn't be interested in Sapphire, and she wouldn't be interested in him. Now, if you was working and Sapphire invited Andy up to dinner, there was some reason for it. The thing for you to do, Kingfish, is to go home and have it out with your wife. Yeah, you ought to get the thing straightened out, because you know I ain't interested in your wife. I just went up there for dinner. Yeah, I know you did, Andy. But you wait a minute. Ow! Kingfish, what in the world you hit me on the head with that bat for? That's for them four slices of roast beef you ate, you big fat pig. But, George, me and Mama didn't know it was a job you had at the club. I only had Andy up here to dinner to make you jealous so you'd stay home. I thought that you was... You thought. You thought. I am sick and tired around here of what you thought and what you think. Now listen, son-in-law. Oh, no, now you listen, mother-in-law, dear. I am sick and tired of you yap-yapping around here. That mouth of yours is the most dangerous thing since the bubonic plague. Now, wait a minute. Now, look, when I tell you to shut up, shut up. Yes, George. I'm going to tell you something, Sapphire. I fed up with you getting jealous of me all the time. But, George, I didn't know you was working. I thought you was running around or well, something. Well, now, listen. I is quitting that job at the nightclub, and I getting a new job. 
But there's going to be a new rule around here from now on. Don't believe nothing unless you see it with your own eyes. Now you get that? Not unless you see it with your own eyes. Yes, George. All right. Now go get my supper, you two hens. Yes, George, dear. <laughs> yes, George, dear. <laughs> I ain't never gonna be jealous of George again as long as I live. Well, I guess we was both wrong about him, daughter. You say he's got a new job? Yes, it's with a department store. He leaves the house every morning at 8 and gets back at 6. So there ain't no chance of him getting up, uh, mixed up with no women. I guess he was right about not believing nothing until you see it with your own eyes. Yes, well, I tell you... Oh, wait a minute, Sapphire. Look at that taxi cab there. Where, Mama? The one that just pulled up there at the red light. Look who's sitting in the back seat. Why, it's George. Yeah, and look who's sitting in there with him. A woman in a print dress and a great big picture hat. And Mama, look. He's got his arm around her. Well, there they go. Oh, Mama, I'm going home and pack. I never want to see that two-timer again as long as I live. This time I done seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> Well, here's your stop, mister. The Globe Department Store. Oh, thank you, driver. Uh, will you help me out, please? Well, you certainly took care of your fellow passenger, didn't you? Yes, these department store dummies is very fragile. I had to keep my arm around it all the way from the warehouse. <laughs> Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. Fight acid indigestion four ways. Use Bismarex. This exclusive Rexall antacid often neutralizes excess acidity in less than one minute. Yes, less than one minute. What's more, Bismarex eases gastric distress, helps relieve discomfort, and leaves a soothing, protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. For relief that's quick, continuous, and prolonged, ask for Bismarex. B I S M A hyphen. R-E-X, Bismarex. Every Rexall drugstore has it. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, to visit your friendly Rexall drugstore. Good night. See you next Sunday. Attention, men. Only 11 days left on Rexall's Get Acquainted Half-Price Special on Stag Brushless Shave Cream. Yes, man, for the remainder of this month, you can buy the regular 50-cent jumbo-sized tube of Stag Brushless Shave Cream for only 25 cents. Give your appearance a boost. Give your wallet a break. Buy the regular 50-cent jumbo-sized tube of Stag Brushless Shave Cream for only 25 cents the remainder of this month at Rexall Drugstores everywhere. Be sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when your Rexall druggist will again present the Amos and Andy Show. The Amos and Andy Show is written by Joe Connolly, Bob Mosier, and Bob Ross. Stay tuned for the Edgar Berg and Charlie McCarthy program, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Ken Niles speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.